right so we're gonna install this and this is more like a walkthrough video on how you can actually do it how you get everything done <laughs> Hello there and thank you for joining me for another day of 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. For those who are new to my face, my name is Anais and I'm just basically sharing my entire learning journey in these 100 days. Now your journey might look different. I'm basing a lot of this content on existing blog posts, existing video tutorials and books. So several of my previous or my first videos actually are based on a book on learning Kubernetes. So that's what I use. Those are the resources that I use to basically advance my learning. You can find all of the resources as well linked on my public notion page on the specific days. So check out today's date or the previous date, depending what you're interested in. Anyway, so in the previous videos, I looked first at an introduction to Prometheus. What is Prometheus? When would we use it? How does it work? Why would we use it? And so on. In the next video, I look specifically at Kubernetes operators because Prometheus has a specific Kubernetes operator that we're also going to use today. Now, today we're going to install Prometheus and all of the resources that are needed to run it, such as Grafana and so on, on our cluster with a Helm chart. Then we're going to install MongoDB, going to run it on our cluster, have a service to, to make it accessible if you want to. <laughs> and then uh, at the end, we're going to install an exporter. And the exporter is important to make the link between Prometheus and MongoDB happen so we actually know what's happening in the performance, the health of those, those resources that MongoDB uses, basically. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get started by going to... And once you go to that link, it's also linked below, you can find all of my notes where I'm basically detailing what I'm actually doing here. And we're going to open this one, setting up Prometheus. Actually, we're going to start with the previous day. So we can open up this one as well. And here I detail basically day 28 what Prometheus is all about. Great. And I have here some setup commands. Now we're going to use the Helm chart directly to set up Prometheus, you can have a look at um, Helm Prometheus operator. And once you access that, you should be able to find here, this one. Okay, we're going to install this one, the Helm Cube Prometheus stack, okay? This one is the one we're going to install. Yay, we found it. Okay, so you can just Google it and that will give it to you, basically. Or you can open this link, right, and have a look at my public Notion page and use that, right, instead. Now we're going to open up the terminal. I'm just going to copy paste it. This is all good. We're going to add Prometheus Community, to have the charts, basically, that are within that. It's already added in my case. Now what we want to do next is, and here's also a video from Nana that I'm also like, I'm using another one right now. So you can also check that out in the top right <laughs> if you prefer that directly. She has an amazing channel, so I highly recommend it. Now we want to use this command to update our repositories. Of course, it's written wrongly. It's Helm. Okay, so updating everything. And then we can install on our cluster the cube Prometheus stack. Now, I'm currently on my Azure cluster, but you could also use a mini cube or micro kids or kind or any other local cluster for that. It just, it should have enough capacity, <laughs> enough resources. So you could use those instead. Now I'm going to install this chart now, the cube Prometheus stack chart. You can find also on one of the other repositories, you can find like a list of those different charts. So we're going to install this. And this is more like a walkthrough video on how you can actually do it, how you get everything done. And this might take a few seconds. So let's fast forward to when this is done, right? It's installing lots of resources. So that's why it takes some time, right? The more resources, the more we have to wait. <laughs> You could also use directly the Prometheus operator. There's a separate repository that I also showed in the previous video on how you can just use the Prometheus operator without the nitty gritty other stuff. But for this video specifically, I want to use the Helm chart that sets everything up in this case, right? Okay, now this is deployed. Awesome. So if I go ahead and say Helm LS, it will provide me um, 
the Helm chart that we just installed, right? So what next? We could access the service directly through port forward right now. We're not going to do it right now. What we're going to do is go back to our day 10. And I want to show you some of the resources that are installed with it. So Prometheus uses something called service monitor. And the service monitor helps us to discover the different services that Prometheus is supposed to monitor. So service and Kubernetes basically provides us with access to the resources, to the pods that are running, to the running application and so on. However, Prometheus itself doesn't actually know right away what those resources are, where they are, and which one it has to monitor. We have to tell it to monitor those resources. And we can do that through service monitors. And the service monitors, they basically just, they have a label within them that tell Prometheus, hey, this service has to be monitored. They connect to the service, and then with the label, they connect to Prometheus itself. So we can have a look at one of those service monitors. Let's just grab this one the Prometheus Cube, Prometheus Grafana one. I'm gonna go ahead, it's probably, it's this one, right? We're gonna have a look at that one right now. So, oh, that didn't actually, okay. So, kubectl get um, service monitor. Sure, I could have just copied it from above and then we're gonna use this. And we're going to say we want to have oh, this and then YAML. We want to have basically this output the YAML file, right? So it's going to monitor of all of our endpoints. So let's say your cluster, it has an IP address, right? Or within your cluster, the pods. Let me just show you. Kubectl get pods. So all of those pods, they have different endpoints of them. And we can have a look at those endpoints actually if we're looking at the services. And we want to monitor the stash metrics and point of those pods, of those services, of those resources that we want to monitor, for instance, right? So the important part, however, is, and we have to find the label section. So the important part is that in this case, it tracks all of the releases that have prom in them. So all of those service monitors, they have basically this label release prom in it. Okay, so all of them, we will find the same label and they basically, this label, this specific label tells in this case, Prometheus, this is a service that you have to monitor. So you can have a look at all of the service monitors and see that the label is included there basically. Now, once we know that, we can also have a look at the custom resources that Prometheus uses, just for the fun of it. So the custom resource definitions. Custom resource definitions are basically Kubernetes resources that extend Kubernetes itself and the Kubernetes API by building on top of the Kubernetes API and building additional resources for it that you can run on your cluster itself. So as we can see here, we have these different um, Kubernetes custom resource definitions that Prometheus uses and created in this case, right? We could also have a look at the specific ones here. Which one do we want to take? Prometheus monitoring careers. Let's have a look at that. And oh, let's actually not have a look at that. So when you open it, you will find a huge, huge YAML file. And you could go through it. You could do the same thing that I did above. Or you can paste it into a file and then you can find the same release tag label. Like release prom label here, right? So. What we want to do instead is next set up MongoDB. And I've put here the different, the two files, first of all, the deployment YAML file and then the service YAML file that you can use to set those up, yeah? So I've already done that. So we're just gonna apply them. I've, I have them here within my deployment file, deployment YAML file. So as you can see, this is just MongoDB, just with the port, container port and everything. I've also taken this from Nana. She has some really, really good resources. So <laughs> kudos to you, Nana. If you see this video, thank you. Okay, thank you so much because this saved me. This was the only video that explained it properly. So I want to amplify her message and her knowledge by telling you, okay? So, okay, let's do this. We want to apply these resources. It's a kubectl apply and then the file is the, the deployment yaml file typing and speaking is a challenge okay so we de we've deployed this mongodb resources it's going to be a replica set of two 
and now we want to deploy the service that's connected to it. Now, as you can see here, it has a selector app MongoDB. So it's connecting to our deployment and the name is just MongoDB service. So we're going to say MongoDB apply service dot YAML file. Okay, so we created those two services. We can go ahead and let's have a look here. Let's close this and have a look at our cluster kubectl get pods and you can see whether or not they got created. So in this case we have two pods here and then kubectl get service and do we have if our MongoDB service running and we could access it through service. Now it's all detailed here on how you can access it. What we want to do instead now is we need We need the exporter, we need the MongoDB exporter. And we can find it here. It's basically within the Prometheus community. Ah, this is the one I was looking at earlier. I was trying to find earlier. We need this, this chart, this Helm chart that installs the exporter, okay? So we can have a look at the different, well, we need this chart. So first we have to add it. And then once we edit it, so you do this, you do these two, right? We already did that at the beginning. It's the same, I think it's the same kind of community resources. So now we want to have a look at the values of our chart, right? So we're gonna have a look at the values. You know, this doesn't help us much if it's right in here, right? So what we want to do instead is we're just gonna say, we want to put that into a values YAML file. And we're going to put that actually in deployment. And then we want to put that into a values YAML file. Values YAML file. Okay. So we put it into a values YAML file. Now we can go ahead and we open this up. As you can see here, this is what's defined within that hum chart within the values YAML file. Yeah. So what we did is we just added this, if you haven't added it, which you should have done in this step before, we just added these, this Helm repository, right? We didn't install any Helm chart yet. We inspected the values because we will have to modify some of the values now. Now we can go ahead and we have to replace it with this. Now you can find these within the Helm chart. You basically have to nitpick this apart. So if you have here the values file for your Helm chart, for this Helm chart, you basically need just the additional labels so just this part is all you delete. And then there's something here that you need to keep. So I'm just gonna delete this all because we're just gonna have this, okay? So we're gonna provide basically the endpoint that um, Prometheus has to, or that is used to access the MongoDB service. And it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be slash metrics in most cases that Prometheus monitors the endpoint. So we have to provide the endpoint here for MongoDB specifically, and then we have to add the label release prom in this case. Before I used Prometheus, but in this case it's release prom, okay? So this tells, again, this tells Prometheus that there's an exporter that has the label release prom and exporter is connected, will automatically connect to MongoDB through the URL, I believe. So um, now that we have the, YAML, the values YAML file, what we need to do in next is actually deploy it. And we're just gonna use this Helm install MongoDB exporter, then the specific Helm chart, and we want to apply our values YAML file, okay? So we're just gonna open this up and we're gonna say, okay, apply it. And now we have to wait again for the Helm chart to install or not. Okay, awesome. So Helm LS will give us our charts that are installed right now that are deployed, which is great. Now, once we have this, we can again have a look at the service monitor and we can have a look at um, the exporter itself and see that the that the label is there. And then once this is all done, you can forward the port. So we can forward, for example, the exporter that we just installed. So we can say port forward service MongoDB exporter, blah, blah, blah. And this is the port 
that's going to be used. So we can access it at localhost 9216. We're going to go ahead and do that. So, and as you can see, this is the MongoDB exporter that we've just installed. And you can see here all the metrics says that this exporter makes accessible to our Prometheus deployment. Without, without our exporter, Prometheus cannot just go ahead and scrape the resources. Okay, so it needs an exporter. So as you can see, now we have that. So now Prometheus should be able to actually monitor everything as the screenshot basically shows. So we can also forward Prometheus, the port to 1990. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now as well. So we can go ahead and say kubectl get all. And here you will see your different services in this case. Let me make this a bit wider so it's nicer to look at or not. No, it doesn't work. Anyway, so as we can see here, here's our service. And then we have here the one that's with 1990, with the port 1990. We can access the service. We're just going to copy this. The cube column port forward. And then the service that we just copied into port 1990. So we're basically telling it to forward our local host, our port on our local host, to that pod to be able to access it well, to that service, and that service is navigate us to the corresponding pod that's here running, okay, also within our cluster. So once that's done, we can access localhost 9090, as I already had open, and then we can go to status, and when you go to status targets, you see all of your different targets that Prometheus is currently aware of. So let's close all of this, and when we see the same screenshot that we just had within uh, the Notion page. So as you can see, we just added this endpoint, right? MongoDB, blah, blah, blah. We added that to our Prometheus uh, rules through the service monitor, through the exporter, the MongoDB hel exporter helm chart that basically allows us to tell Prometheus, hey, there are the services around MongoDB that we want to monitor. And the exporter is making that accessible to Prometheus. So as you can see, we have now, we have it here running. We have access to it. Now, the next thing you want to do, it's great that Prometheus is like monitoring all of this and you see like the, whether or not the services are up and running, right? But you also want to see the metrics over time. So the next thing is that you go to graph and that you look up specific rules, specific, um, yeah, ways to filter for, for the metrics. Because right now, if I go MongoDB, Asserts total. Okay, they're not actually that many right now. But um, there could be like a lot, a lot, a lot of matrices that are scraped by Prometheus and you want to be able to filter them, right? So Prometheus has a specific pro like querying language and it's a bit difficult to learn. It's a bit of a steep learning curve. So I'm probably gonna make my next video about them, just walking you through it. But as a starting point, now you should be able to have this. Now you might wonder, okay, how can you make it accessible to your specific, um, like to your, how can you make your application traceable by Prometheus? You wouldn't necessarily make your own application accessible to it. You would have your application, you deploy that application on your cluster. And then on that cluster, you have, for example, uh, Istio or another service mesh, something that makes, that exposes the endpoint and exposes the AP of those, this application of yours to the outside world, right? So you would monitor the service mesh, you would monitor that instead of monitoring the application. So the next videos are gonna be on service mesh, in this case Istio, and what they are, and then also the Prometheus program, or uh, querying language. So to really get you up and to speed with everything around that, those concepts, right? Now this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I would highly appreciate your support. Also, some really amazing people and I started a Discord community where you can join, ask questions, get involved. Maybe you want to share some resources that are useful for your Kubernetes or DevOps learning journey. Check out the link below. Now I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.